Hello and welcome to Managerial Accounting. This is chapter nine, budgeting. This chapter, we have three learning objectives. So we have three mini videos. Although I will warn you, the second one, uh, you will want to have a caffeinated beverage for. It's a little bit longer, a lot a bit longer. It's a long one. Okay, so we have two mini videos and one longer one. Uh, we're going to first talk about what budgets are, why organizations use them, uh, and get the overview. Then we're going to prepare a longer master budget. Um, and honestly, like the principles here are similar to what I used when I was in a financial planning and reporting role. Uh, from there, we are going to go look at our third objective, and that is to prepare a flexible budget uh, and understand how the flexible budget varies from the regular master or static budget. All right. So without further ado, what is a budget? Well, whoops. Uh, a budget is defined as a detailed quantitative plan for acquiring and using financial and other resources over a specified future time period. All right, it's a plan. Um, and the act of preparing that plan, uh, that budget, is called budgeting. Uh, the use of budgets is done to control an organization's activity, and this is known as budgetary control. Budgets serve as both a planning tool and a control tool in organizations, uh, where planning involves developing objectives and preparing various budgets to achieve those objectives. So various budgets, various people, various departments, lots of planning, lots of coordination. Uh, this control includes gathering feedback to assess uh, the extent to which objectives are developed at the planning stages are being obtained. So we got to look, are we meeting our objectives? So an effective budgeting system provides both planning and control. So did we meet our plan? Why or why not? The master budget summarizes a company's plan, sets specific targets for sales, production, distribution, administration, and financing activities. Effectively, big picture people is we look at the entire financial statements and we project out because we need to make sure, are we going to have the resources that we need? Are we gonna have the raw materials in place uh, to actually produce the items that we need to sell uh, if we're not if we are a merchandising company, do we have the required inventory on hand? How's our cash doing? How's our cash management? Uh, and what not? All right, so let's look into the planning process. So before we get into how we do this, it's important to understand um, why we do this. So a part of the planning process, um, we do this so that we can encourage managers to think about and plan for the future. It's a tool to that which we communicate management's financial goals throughout the organization to allocate resources to those parts of the organization to where they can be used most effectively, as well as to coordinate the plans and activities of managers in different departments. So it's like a centralized, yeah, it's a centralized plan. This is what we're going to do. This is how we plan to do it. Um, everybody on board. And then, of course, that's the plan. We always got to look at how did we do with the plan. So uh, part of the control system is that budgets are compared to actual results during the year, after the year, kind of on a rolling basis often. Uh, and this is to improve both the efficiency and effectiveness. So how well are we using the resources that we have? Um, and are, could we be using fewer resources to obtain the same objective um, of the operations? And then budgets are also often used to evaluate and reward employees. Did we make, um, did we lower the costs? Um, relative to what we thought? Did we bring in more revenues? How do we do overall net profit? Um, so they can be used absolutely to evaluate and reward employees and, you know, motivate them. So oftentimes a budgeting period tends to be annual, and but it can also be divided into quarterly or monthly budgets. It could also be like a five-year plan that's then broken into one year, uh, quarterly and monthly budgets. Um, when you hear the term continuous budget, that's a 12 month budget that rolls forward one month or one quarter as the current month or quarter is completed. 
Companies usually create budgets by relying on some combination of top-down budgeting, so that's like management tells employees or executive tells management, and participa participative budgeting. A participative budget involves managers across the organization in developing budget estimates for their areas of responsibility. However, with a top-down approach, that means that top-level managers initiate the budgeting process by issuing overall profit targets. Most companies choose to use participative budgeting process. It's like participating, but participative uh, budgeting, including lower level managers in developing this budget because it shows respect for those managers' experience and opinions. It leverages those managers' knowledge uh, to get accurate estimates, but also increases managers' motivation to achieve the goals that they hadn't put in setting, like skin in the game, uh, and empowers managers to take ownership of the budget and be accountable for deviations from it. Uh -huh. All right, um, <laughs> budgets prepared by lower level managers cannot be simply accepted without review by higher level management um, because if no review system was in place, participative budgets might contain excessive budgetary slack, uh, where slack is defined as the difference between the revenues and expenses a manager reasonably expects to achieve and the amounts included in the budget. Right. So if, for example, the lower level managers were like, yeah, 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 um, they think we can hit 100 million in sales, they're going to put down 80 million so that when they hit, you know, 80, 90, 100, 110 million, that they look like superstars. So you really have to go down and figure out and, um, you know, analyze every single line and be like, is this reasonable? Is this feasible? What is this based on? <clears throat> How realistic is this to hit? Um, how much slack is in the budget? Okay. So in order to see if the budget proposed is reasonable, something used benchmarking is often used. Benchmarking is um, when creating budgets, some companies choose to use the performance of competitors or best-in-class companies or perhaps even other business units in the same company to provide kind of those best, best numbers or best practices. So the best-in-class company is the one known for achieving exceptional levels of performance on the same aspect of their operations, such as customer service, distribution, marketing, and so on. So comparing yourself to the benchmark is known as benchmarking. So perhaps it's by comparing revenues to revenues, cost to cost, or process performance. Um, when you compare your performance against the best in class, that is known as benchmarking. And that kind of helps to assess whether or not there's, you know, a lot of slack in your budget. For example, if the best in class can hit $120 million worth of revenue, let's just make it $100 million just to make it easy, $100 million, and you're probably 80% as good as your um, benchmarked competitor, then maybe it's reasonable to suggest that you could in fact have that $80 million per year. But if your, you know, oops, um, if your number one competitor has uh, 120 million and you say that you're about 80% as good as them, yours better be significantly higher than that 80 million, right? Too much slack in the budget. Okay, so this circles back to part, you know, honestly, like my favorite part of counting, which is the uh, motivation part the behavioral factors in budgeting. So my research often looks at incentives, influencing, um, so how do we, um, how do personality factors, how do behavioral factors impact performance? So that is budgeting, <laughs> absolutely. Two important purposes of the budget are to motivate people and coordinate their efforts. These purposes can be undermined if the budget is used in an inflexible man manner to control people. Uh, so the idea of behavioral factors in budgeting relates to responsibility accounting, where responsibility accounting is where managers are held responsible for those items and only those items that they can actually influence to a significant extent. Think about it like this. How motivated would you be to complete the pre-work you know, do your quizzes, um, 
do the term test and do the final exam if your entire grade was determined on whether or not um, how many times you can jump up and down on your left foot, right? So it's like, no, 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 you have this course. We want you to do all this pre-work. We want you to do all these quizzes. We want you to you know, prepare for the final exam and write the final exam. But um, in order to determine your final grade, we're just going to ask you to send in a video of you jumping up and down on your left foot. And if you get 56 jumps, then you get 56%. If you get 99 jumps, you get 99%. <laughs> What? Okay, you may be like, Prof, why are you saying it like this? But it's very much like what is measured gets managed, right? So that's, oh my gosh, why is he escaping me? Uh, he's one of my favorite, um, oh, I'll remember it by the last last video, I promise. Um, let's get, let's measure gets managed. Oh, somebody can post that on the video and just like let me know. Okay, um, but yeah, so if we don't measure what we want to manage, that is, I want to manage your learning. I want you to like, you know, I want you to love managerial accounting, but I want you to like feel comfortable <laughs> at least, uh, even if you don't love it. And, and I want to, you know, that's why I show you Bloom's taxonomy. That's why we run down, like, this is what you're doing. This is how to get you there. This is like the order of operations. Um, this is, you know, why you do practice problems. This is how it builds up to that. Um, and so, but if all that you were being measured on, that is your reward system, um, grades are for rewards to students, like paychecks are rewards to employees. If all we're going to do is measure how many times you jump up and down on your left foot in a row, you know, without falling, then we're going to get a lot of people practicing how to jump up and down on their left foot. So when you see people, employees at work doing kind of wonky things, look at their performance structure, right? Like if you don't have, if employees aren't based on a budget, here, here's an example, um, Pizza Hut or Taco Bell or freshy, you know, if somebody is paid hourly, they're paid when they start and they are paid when they clock out. Say they're paid from 12 p.m. to 5 p.m. Why would somebody stay till 5.30 if they're not getting paid? No, hourly employees, you pay them to show up, do a job, do it well within the parameters while they're there and then leave. However, when you have a salaried employee, um, oftentimes, you know, you're told to work from eight to five. But if there's a project, kind of you're expected to stay longer but there's usually other tangible or intangible benefits to doing so. In some companies, it might be, you know, the learning and articling and kind of the implicit uh, agreement that you will be working a lot of overtime in exchange for receiving uh, this uh, articling experience that will then propel you into other uh, careers after you put in your two to three years, your 30 months. Uh, and then uh, in other arrangements, it might be that you get a part of the bonus pool. So, you know, if your company outperforms the budget, then you get part of this like large bonus. So then you're kind of explicitly rewarded with some financial incentive. So either way, um, kind of looking back to the behavioral factors, how do you want to align the behavioral factors of your employees with the organization's objectives? Uh, similarly to you know, why we definitely hear all feedback, um, integrate all feedback, um, uh, you know, really digest, but also wait until all students have the ability to provide that feedback before, uh, you know, considering updates to the course and whatnot. So definitely want to hear from students, just like, you know, organizations want to hear from employees. However, it's also about, um, you know, when do we do this? How do we do this? Acknowledging that just like grades, just like, you know, working through four months on mastering those items, uh, being in an organization, you know, working months, years, um, maybe five, 10 years in an organization, understanding how everything flows together is also a lengthy process. All right. Uh, thank you so, so much for your time and attention in this video. Uh, what I'd like for you to gain from this first one is what is a budget? Centralized location of planning involves many departments, um, can be participatory. So including, you know, many people it can be top down where you're kind of just given a budget. But the reason why we do promote participatory is to help get that buy-in. Although it isn't always possible, especially in shorter timelines and um, just understanding the size and mandate of the organization. All right. I will see you in the next video. Thank you so much.